Let's make a fun layered paper bag junk journal. This is a design team project for the Digital Collage Club. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. My friend Rhonda Winstead, also known as Rhonda without an H. Hi, sweetie, who is also one of my fabulous design team members posted a mini series of making a Christmas paper bag junk journal in November and I fell in love. You need to go check out those videos, which I will add to the description box below. I love the different layering and I knew I needed to make one myself. So thank you so much, sweetie, for this inspiration. And Rhonda mentioned in her video that she was actually inspired by Rachel from Roxy Creations, who made something similar, but as a Christmas ephemera folder. I will also link that video for you below. And of course, that turned out gorgeous as well in typical lovely Rachel style. And Rachel, in turn, mentioned she was inspired by Liz the Paper Project, whose video, of course, you can also find linked below. <laughs> so lots of inspiration for this type of project. I find it so fun how we all take inspiration from each other and come up with our own versions. So this is obviously not going to be a Christmassy version. This is just going to be probably nature themed or maybe even more specifically bird themed. I have not actually made up my mind. I first want to make the construction of it and then I will think about the theme of the journal. So as you can see here, I have a wide array of paper bags. <laughs> this is a mixture of bags I have been hoarding. Some of them I have received in Happy Mail. Some of them are from stores like this is from my supermarket. <laughs> Beautifully yummy glassine bag. Some of them are from random shops like this one and I've been hoarding them all and I haven't been good about using them. This one I got when I received a gift from my BFF. Oh, uh, yeah, this one as well actually. So, so many beautiful different choices and I would be surprised if you couldn't find any in your stash as well. <laughs> so what I love about this project most and what I will be trying to do is the layering process because we want this journal to not be like just one size. We want lots of things sticking out from everywhere and different layers that kind of invite you into the journal. I have not decided which bags I'm going to use or how I'm going to layer at all. I wanted to share that process with you and come up with something that looks fun, I guess. <laughs> we, we need something to start off with, some sort of a piece that will help me as a starting point to work from there. Maybe I'll take this beautiful piece from my BFF. I know she didn't make this. I know she buys her envelopes. She's she's not really into crafting. <laughs> I think it's the last thing that she would want to do, honestly. <laughs> but I still love her. <laughs> okay, so I'm folding, as you can see, I'm just folding them in half. And then I guess we'll be cutting open the sides to have pockets as well, because that's fun. I don't even know yet how many pages I want this to have. I'll just kind of see how thick it all seems. Okay, what else do I want in here? I have so many beautiful options. This one I find really fun. This is one of these policy envelopes, which is actually used for like internal mail. And it actually came from Hong Kong, which is really cool. <laughs> so maybe I can use that and because I, because I just love this. So let's fold that one. Let's just close up the string so that doesn't get in the way. Okay, I need some bags with different sizes because these are too much the same size. So either something smaller or something bigger. I'm not sure how big I want to go. Here's another big one. This one is gorgeous. A lot of these here came from Dana, my 
journaling friend in Romania. Hi, Donna, in case you're watching. I love your paper bags. She brought me an insane amount of goodies when she visited me in Vienna. Okay, now this is still pretty much the same size. So we need to move from this size. <laughs> move on, Barbara, move on. <laughs> it's so hard. I love them all. Okay, let, let's try a smaller size. This is a very nice green. How about this one? This one looks fun. Rhonda did such an amazing job of layering hers. I just love it, love it, love it. Okay, see, this is starting to look better. I, I need more things sticking out from here, I think, meaning I need like longer envelopes, I guess, but I don't know if I have any because I think these are all pretty much... Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. This one here looks long. Rhonda, the sound, crinkly paper. <laughs> Rhonda loves this and I do too. Actually, I'm gonna fold it the other way. Let's put this in between maybe these two. Oh, it hardly sticks out actually. Ah. Okay, I think I'll leave it like this for now. Then maybe I'll try this one from my grocery store. These are what we have now in some of the grocery stores for putting vegetables and fruit inside, which is really nice. Environmentally friendly instead of those plastic ones. But some stores have the recycled plastic ones, which is also fine. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to see some layers. That's good. This one is really pretty. I think you can get these. I think Rhonda mentioned there was an Etsy shop. There's probably more than one Etsy shop where you can get these. I don't know, unfortunately. Let's put that in here. This is so fun. What a fun shape of a journal. Oh, I have this white one from one of our museums at the Belvedere. Put here. I think we can do like maybe a couple more. Maybe one of this kind would be fun that have the wide bottoms because that can always be made into like a tuck spot or something. Let's do that. I have another one of these small policy envelopes. This one is obviously new. I believe this was in Debbie's Happy Mail from the US. Super fun. I think this might be the perfect project to use this. And they don't always have to be folded in half, actually. What am I doing? Let's fold it this way. I have 11. That seems like a pretty good amount. Maybe I just want something smaller here in the middle. Yeah, let's try this one. Okay, I think that should be enough. I guess I could always add flip outs and stuff later, but I think this is a pretty decent amount. So you can bind these in different ways. 
You could either just do like a pamphlet stitch here, like you would do with any junk journal, a three hole pamphlet stitch, a stitch, <laughs> a five hole pamphlet stitch or whatever you want. That would be perfectly fine. And actually I'm still considering that, especially given how many layers I have here. So Rachel and Liz glued them together here. Rhonda used the same method, but I think instead of gluing, she just used eyelets and then she put a cute ribbon through it. So I need to decide how do I do this? Of course, when we bind it using that other method of just bending them like this, we lose a part of the page because we won't see it because that part will be glued down on every page, which I guess would be fine. Also seems like a lot of work, to be honest. <laughs> Another issue I have binding it just like this is the gator mouth issue. Look at how this is without having any embellishments in it. No pockets, no nothing. So that means once I'm finished, it's going to be like huge. I'm not sure I'm happy with that. So I think instead I'm going to do a traditional like five hole pamphlet stitch binding. And instead of having this one signature, I'm going to put this into three signatures because I have 12 paper bags here. So I will distribute them into three signatures with four bags each and see how that looks. I'm not sure about this one now with the new concept. I think I will take another one instead of this one. So now these are distributed much more even, but it doesn't look as raggedy. You know what I mean? Like I don't have enough things sticking out. I have the feeling. So maybe now I need to add another one to each signature. This is more challenging than you'd think. This is so interesting. I mean, you could spend all day rearranging these paper bags, right? <laughs> okay, I think I like that one. That has a lot of fun different layers. That one is good. This one is weird need something else maybe it's just weird because this thing is so you know what this is too stiff I'm not gonna use this I want this to have like soft pages so I need two more for this one And I think same thing here. I'm actually not going to use this policy envelope because it's just too stiff. Okay, I need one more for this one. How about this big one? This one needs another smaller one in front here, even though this will now have one additional, like one paper bag more than these, but I don't care. <laughs> it needs something. I don't think the designs matter at all because I'm assuming that pretty much everything will be covered, but I don't know actually yet. So let's just, yeah, much better. I'm not sure I'm happy with this now sticking out like this. No, nope, not liking this one. <laughs> Let's fold this one differently, not in half. Now I don't like how these are ending the same. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> We'll do this 
and then I'm actually not going to use this because now I have all soft paper bags and I'm going to stick with that. <laughs> and I'll just put this in the middle. There, I think that's better. But now, of course, I again have the issue that nothing is sticking out here. I mean, yes, I have fun layers, but nothing is sticking out. So, hmm. I think I'll just have to add things sticking out, maybe like fabric or lace or something so that it gets more raggedy. Or even with the other papers I add, I can add them so that they stick out. Because this is just, no. This is not what I'm into at the moment, but I do love all the different layers, so that's cool. And you see here now, this is really evenly distributed. This is, I think, much better. Before I sew these together, I'm going to add, I think, some paint or something to these plain paper bags. I have a few in here. So there's one, two, three, one in each signature it looks like, which is perfect, that are way too plain. And I'm just going to paint those. And so that I remember where they were, I'm going to stick this inside so I know where to place them later. Oh, that's a front one. Hmm, okay, I'll just have to remember that. Can you remind me <laughs> at the end? So I took out a whole bunch of cheap paints, acrylics, and as you can see, I have my gloves on because I'm going to use my handy finger tools, which I am super fond of. <laughs> and I'm just, I don't know, let's see what happens. <laughs> oh wait, there's one more I need to get. You were probably thinking gold, but no, it's a buff titanium. How do we do this? <laughs> I have no idea. I have never tried this before, so... We'll just see what happens. pretty happy with these now and I will let these dry and do something similar on the back side and then maybe we'll do some mark making or stenciling or stamping or something I'm not sure yet it's now almost a week later and I have been procrastinating I had no idea where this was going I felt stuck I felt all over the place I just didn't know how to continue this video <laughs> Like, what was the point of this video in the first place? Okay, the point was to make this multi-layered paper bag, which again, as you maybe can see, has changed because now I put it all back into one signature. I cannot make up my mind. And if you are ever in that situation where you don't know where or how to continue with your journal, I'm with you. I get it. <laughs> But I also realized that sitting around and just thinking about it isn't going to help. I need to actually sit at my desk, play with the papers and see how I can make it into something that I love. So the first step was going back to rearranging these into one signature. I now have 14 paper bags in here. But maybe you're also wondering, Barbara, what happened to the painted paper bags? I'll show you them in a second. And I continued off camera because after having seen what they looked like when I started painting the backgrounds, I was like, there's no way they're gonna work with the style I have planned for this. So I did them anyway because I felt like I needed to get it out of my system. And maybe I can use them in my Urban Nature Plan Junk Journal with a Defemrember in it. So I'll show you those, but I doubt that I will actually end up putting them in here. 
So this is one and I haven't decorated all the pages yet. This took me quite a long time because I just didn't know what I wanted to do. I'm super happy with this page. I really like it. So after I painted the background, I stamped some images on it. And that's all I did for the background. And then I just collaged on top. Here you see some of my handmade stamps that I stamped. Some collage fodder in the background, some pieces of book spines. These are book ends. Yeah, so I'm happy with the collages themselves. I don't know how happy I am with the actual backgrounds. I mean, these are all right. I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about them, to be honest. This one's one of the bigger ones. Again, these are some book parts. This is torn off of a vintage cover and then just punched three holes in with my regular hole punch. I've done nothing on the inside. You see, these are just stamps, just some mark making. And here we have another one of my trees. These are again some book parts. This is again book cloth from a vintage book where I just stitched. I had this already on hand, so I just needed to glue that down. I, I really like, I mean, I, I really like the collages themselves, as I said. I, I just don't know about the surrounding parts of it. And then the third one is this one. So again, stamping with some handmade stamps on collage fodder. This is the inside, more stamping and nothing on this one yet. So yeah, I will keep those on the side. It could be that I just end up tearing the collages out and using them either in the Urban Nature Junk Journal or in here or in something else entirely. So I wasn't liking the idea of binding it with a regular pamphlet stitch and having signatures because I wanted this to be a journal in itself without having to make a cover for it. Like I have in my mind that I want this to be a very easy version of a journal, but being pretty at the same time. And also I feel that I need to get this binding where it's just glued together here and then maybe adding some eyelets here. I feel like I need to get that out of my system in order to move on. Now, whether I will end up liking that or not is, is a totally different thing, but I feel like I need to have the experience of making it once. So sometimes I think that's a good reason to make something just because you wanna know how it is and maybe it is something you like and maybe it's not, but it's the process that is important and it's about understanding what you like and what you don't like. And sometimes you have to try it before you know it, just seeing it is not enough. So why don't I give you a flip through of the layers now, and then I'm going to cut open the ends of the paper bag, which are still closed. Okay, I zoomed you out a little bit, so. So now I only have these thin, fun paper bags which feel very yummy. Aha, uh -huh, I'm just seeing something here. See, I don't like how these two line up here. So I need to change those. I can simply move this over here. Oh, and these line up, nope. <laughs> See, a lot of them have similar sizes. Do I want two greens next to each other? I guess it's okay. Or, yeah, I'll put something on it anyway, then they won't look so similar at the end. Okay, so now it's this, this, this. And then here for the two middle ones, somehow I don't really mind them being so similar. Don't ask me why. Yeah, and then going to the second half, like this and this and this. Here, oh, again, we have two that are pretty much lining up. That's not good. Of course, what I could do easily is just to fold one of these two 
not in the center but on one side but i didn't want to have the crease but i'll just have the crease oh i already folded this knot on this not at the halfway point they still line up hmm okay then maybe i need to also fold this one not on the halfway point this is really as i've mentioned five days ago not as easy as it might seem or it's really easy and i'm just totally complicating everything because i'm overthinking everything both options are very possible okay so now we have this and then this and then this and here okay wow i can't tell you how many times i have rearranged the sequence of these I would like it to have more of a longer shape, so I'm going to, because that's what I have before, I believe. I'm just gonna move some of these out more. Maybe even more, like that. I just want it longer. You know what, I'm gonna first glue the pages, uh, the, the paper bags together here, and then, I'll cut them because otherwise I'm going to move all the paper bags again, which I really don't want. So I thought rather than just making straight cuts, I would use my pinking shears and probably even these fun scissors, which have like these scallops. Maybe I'll tear one. I don't know. I just want some variety and I don't think I want any straight cuts. Oh, but I just said I want to first glue it. See, I'm all over the place. I don't know what is happening. So I don't remember in which video I saw it. Maybe it was Liz, the paper project. I think she actually made the folds or was it Rachel? I don't remember now. Made the folds before, like even on a, like a scoreboard. I don't know that that's necessary. And given that I want this to be simple, I think I'm just going to make the folds in this way and kind of just make them as I'm going along. So that means the first part I'm gluing is this flap here, but only up until where the first bag ends, because otherwise I won't be able to fold this back anymore. I'm going to use tacky glue for this. Let's see how this goes. Hopefully this will be easy. <laughs> But if it works, if I'm happy with it, of course, this is a great alternative to sewing in your signatures. If that is something you don't want to do or you're, you, don't, you feel like you're not ready to do yet, I really think that's an easy way to do it. Okay, so now we have this, right? And then I'm going to fold this back exactly in the same place. And this time I am gluing this part here that I just bent up until where this paper bag ends. I think that's how it needs to be. <laughs> I have not experimented with this at all. I'm just taking you along for the ride. This is not a tutorial. This is a process video, which might turn into a failure video. <laughs> But I'm thinking even if it's a failure, I, I will have learned something from it and hopefully you will as well. Maybe it's only how not to do it. <laughs> okay, but that seems to work. My theory seems to be okay. So now for this one, I guess I need to glue all of these three paper bags because this one is bigger. Yep, uh, I think that makes sense. <laughs> it's a couple of hours later because I wanted to let the glue dry a little bit. After I had glued it, I had just put on these kind of clamps all the way down the spine, like this, four of them, which kind of left, left this indent. 
yeah, which is not great. <laughs> but I want to cover that up anyway, so it's fine. It seems like it's working well. It is actually a lot flatter than I thought it would be. So it's nice that it's actually folding over really nice and flat. So I'm really liking that. But then I have a vision of what I wanted to add here. And now I'm realizing I cannot. And it makes me sad because it would have been so cool. I have this branch in my stash. I had collected it last year sometime. And I think it's so pretty. Look. <laughs> and I think it would have been just perfect here on the spine. Given that this will be a nature themed journal. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, but I can't do it. Because I realized that I can't really fold these back. You know, it's totally going to be in the way, which is so sad. So that's not going to happen, but it will happen on another journal, I promise. <laughs> Instead, because I do want to cover this up just because of the lines that I made. Otherwise, I don't think it would be necessary. Yes, you could put in the eyelets, of course. I have this here, and I think this actually... If I like tear a strip out of this, it will be really pretty with the colors I have here. If I just tear a strip off and put it around the spine here, I kind of like that. I think that will work very nicely. So I'm going to try that. And I'm really loving the fact that I don't have to make a separate cover for this. Yep, I like it. Just going to take some tacky glue. Oh no, I can't do that. <gasps> I'm just realizing because then that won't fold. What am I doing now? <laughs> oh, I cannot do that. At least not so far in. You can see I'm completely out of my comfort zone with this journal. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing everything wrong here. Oh, that's too bad. I really like that look. Thank goodness nothing worse happened. So I need to quickly take this off. Oh no, look, <laughs> the paint is staying there. Actually, that could be a cool effect. Let's just say that that's a feature. <laughs> Actually, that does look pretty cool. I couldn't have planned that. <laughs> Another thing I could imagine that would look cool is some stitching here. Maybe one of these Japanese book binding techniques. You know, they have these very pretty stitches. Something like that could look really nice and I will consider that. But I need to wait till this is completely dry before I start stitching through that with a needle. So in the meantime, why don't we open these pockets here? So let's try one with the scalloped scissors. I always have to line these up well so that it looks good. Or you don't care about it and you're not a perfectionist. That works too. <laughs> but I can't do that. That's one of the things where I, I just, you know, I try to get out of my perfectionism. But there are things that just would really bug me too much. There's some things I'm learning to let go but some I can't, and this is definitely something I cannot. At least not yet, maybe someday. <laughs> All right, so we have a cute pocket here now. Let's just open, this needs opening. Oh, actually, why don't we just tear this one? And you don't have to open up all the pockets. I mean, maybe you wanna keep some closed. This really looks like a mouse has chewed this up. <laughs> oh, 
for the fun of it, I'm just going to open all the pockets because why not? Let's do these with my pinking shears. This one I will tear. So I'm done cutting all the bags open. I have completely destroyed this one, as you can see here. I have completely torn into this. So either I will need to make this even more narrow or I will find a way to patch this up when I put on my decorative papers. At the moment, I feel this is a mess and I don't really know how I'm going to continue yet. Hopefully I will have figured that out in the next video where I want to decorate and finish this journal. <laughs> in hindsight, I must say it would have made more sense to cut the bags open before I put them in the journal. So that would be my advice if you attempt to make one. It just makes it so much easier. Looking forward to seeing the finished journal because I have no idea what it's going to be like. <laughs> So hope to see you back here for part two. Love you guys. Mwah. Mwah.